Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now uh, you'll have to forgive me if I sneeze and I've been doing some cleaning with uh, some disinfectant spray stuff in the in my fridge freezer. I think it's affected my nose quite a lot so please forgive that. Now this is the start of a new little project so we're going to be building an audio amplifier, a rather good one as well. Uh, something that you can use at home, something that would probably fall into the bracket of hi-fi quality. Something I'm very happy with. I built two of these boards, a left channel, a right channel. Uh, probably had two, maybe even longer, years ago, maybe three years ago. And they still work, they work fantastic. That's what I've had on in the background while I've been doing uh, my housework. And I love the sound of it and I really want to share this with you guys because if you are into building kits and things like that this is just basically a kit the difference is you've got to go and find your own uh, your components but I'm going to give you the, the bill of materials and so that's going to make it easy for you to be able to get bits and pieces be able to get it but uh, first of all I just want to tell you um, about this particular circuit and it's a come over to the screen with me it's uh, from Elliott Sound Products it's a 60 to 100 watt hi-fi power amplifier. Now I'm not going to go through all of this with you, but I'm going to just give you, we're going to go through it all as the circuit is built, but we're going to give you the breakdown of what's here. So, um, this is a project on uh, sound-au.com, Australian um, website, Australian chap, excellent. And the project is 3A. Now, as we go down, the reason why I'm building this is one, because if you wish, you can buy the boards. You can buy the boards um, from ESP, Elite Sound Products, which will make your life a lot easier. I'm going to be building mine onto Perf board. I've done it twice already. I'm going to do it like that because, um, uh, uh, well, I've got the boards and I, I enjoy doing the soldering. I like making all my tracks traces up with the component leads and soldering that in there and it's it's done me good it's, it's done really well so far so i'm going to carry on and do it like that that's for me um now like i say it sells the boards uh you can mount your uh, transistors vertically or horizontally depends how you wish to on those boards or you can play along at home we can go for the perf board approach he recommends some specific transistors in there, and they're the ones I've gone ahead with this time. The last time I didn't, I bought transistors, which I just bought off eBay, and they've done adequately. They've done very well indeed, have far outweighed my expectations. I hoped for them to be as good, and they have been as good, so I'm really, really impressed. And these are what you can get um, if you don't want to buy the slightly more expensive from on semi through the, you know, I bought mine from farnow.com. So, as you can see, here's, uh, here's the transistor list, and I got some Borns uh, 25 turn 2K trimmer. And you want a 25 turn if you can get it, because that's gonna give you more resolution to tweaking in that quiescent current. All important quiescent current. So this is where I got mine from. Uh, you don't have to, like I said, um, on this page, you're gonna see where the alternatives are. And even if I just show you here in this section here, you've got the alternatives. The ones I'm using um, are, are these ones here, or you can actually use these uh, cheaper ones, NJW3281s, NJW1302s. That's exactly what I've used on the last two boards, and I'm thrilled with it. But I'm going to make another two boards with the recommended, uh, the top ones chips for this, uh, specifically made by OnSemi for audio. Now, one thing I do love about this circuit, uh, is looking at this, is that uh, there's a lot of literature. There's not too much, it's all very, very relevant, there's a lot of literature, but the nice thing about it is it goes through the different transistors and what you can use, even if you want to, you can use tip 35, tip 36 for your output transistors. They may not be as uh, higher quality, as the other ones and they may not have as much power dissipation capacity and they don't um, as these 
I mean, these are 200 volts and these are 350 volts, the ones I'm going to be using, the Sorrel, I've been using these before, and uh, they're ideal, there's uh, one B, uh, BD 140s and 139s for the driver trans transistors, ideal, they're, they work, they're great, they're uh, audio transistors and they work and they're great. It doesn't matter about your capacitors so much either, 100 nanofarads, you don't have to use the fine gold Muse stuff, um, Nichicon, but you can. And I would say, hey, if you can find them cheap enough, use them, you know, uh, use them. Or you can use the other ones, because at the start I did, and all I did with my boards was once I decided, yeah, yeah, I want to stick in the uh, better quality capacitors and such. Not that it seemed like it made much difference, but I'm sure it did. Otherwise, where's the point in the difference on the capacitors? I just use cheap ones. Cheap ones, you can get them in a bundle for like a couple of dollars off uh, eBay for, you know, probably 50, 100 nanofarad. Uh, capacitors uh, and you want to make sure you get like 50 50 volts or a little bit higher if you want to but a uh, 50 volts minimum yeah, and it will give you the differences between driving into four ohms eight ohms uh, different voltages i'd recommend getting a transformer with a 24 24 output because that will give you 35 volts uh, per rail on dc uh, the board we're going to know the board a little bit now here's the circuit this circuit is very good and very simple at the same time and because it's like that it makes it easy enough for a noob like me to be able to put together and build get it right you know because I did and I was so thrilled with myself and that's why I had the, the nerve to build the second board without thinking I'm gonna you know it's gonna be no good I'm gonna break it uh, we'll go with the circuit in the next one, but I'll tell you now it's got a long tail pair, differential pair in there which um, cuts off a lot of the unwanted frequencies which cleans up the sound, the circuit, right from the get-go. Uh, that's one reason why it's brilliant. Um, and you can lay it out exactly the way you see it, meaning that you don't need to reshuffle this in shape or anything like that because that's what I did, I laid it out as I see it. And that's how I got it onto my boards in the first place. Now they're underneath the coffee table to the left of me, right underneath. And uh, that's what I use as my hi-fi system. It's all under there, my cats can't get under there particularly. Um, and it works great, it works great. So let me get down. The nice thing about this is, yeah, you, it, it tells you about everything to do with the board, what, what, what it's doing. And that's one of the reasons why I really do like it. It's because it goes through with you bit by bit um, what does what and why it does it. And so you get an understanding, even down to the little green LED that is on the circuit. It's not there for show, even though it does look pretty cool. It's a little green LED here, a little green LED there. It's not for show. Those particular LEDs are the ones that you want. They're not the very bright ones. They give a certain voltage drop across it, 1.92 volts, and that's what you need. Um, in order for it to do its job in in the circuit and that'll be I'll explain that more when we actually go into the, the circuit and start doing the build. Um, you've got a whole bunch of information about construction. Uh, it tells you what resistors to use. Now it does say here you can use a, a quarter watt or half watt metal film for the lowest noise. Now I've used quarter watt because they're the standard ones, they're the ones you can get cheap. You can buy a whole packet of those, 56 different values, 1800 capacitors, um, resistors, sorry, for quite a cheap price, around about sort of 15 bucks, something like that. I would suggest that you get, maybe if you can, I mean I've used the standard cheap um, 2K pots, 25 turns, but these ones are born, so they're a bit more expensive. Um, but the reason why I've gone for these this time round is because I've got the better chips. I, I have over the last couple of few years had to just slightly tweak the um, the uh, the wiper on the other ones on the other channels. But that could be because maybe one day I set it up when it was a really hot day, and so it seemed like it was a bit more. And the other time I did it when it was really cold. Don't know. But this time round I've just gone for these just because I, you know. What the hell not, I had to make up a certain amount of money to get free shipping. Right, so we can look at here as well, and we can look at the, the quick parameters and the measurements. 
base specifications. Gain, 27 dB, inputs impedance, 24K, input sensitivity, 1.22 volts for 100 watts into eight ohms, frequency response, 10 hertz to 30 kilohertz, minus one dB, typical. Distortion, THD, total harmonic distortion, and 0.04, typical, on watt to 80 watts. Power supplies 42 volts into 8 ohms, 90 watts power, 35 volts into 8 ohms, 60 watts power, 35 volts supply, 4 ohm load, 100 watts. Now I use 35 volts into a 6 ohm load, so I'll get somewhere between 60 and 100. Hum and noise minus 73 dBV, unweighted, and the DC offset of less than 100 millivolts. So that's all good stuff. It's all good stuff, it's something you can build at home. And then we go from there, where we talk about the recommended uh, power supplies and such. Like I said, I'll go with the 24-24 and have yourself 35 volt rails because it's not really worth the extra stress you put on the chips for that little bit of extra one and a half uh, dB that you might get in gain. So we go through a whole bunch of powering up instruction, which is very good. Um, and this is why I really do like this circuit. Apart from it works really well, I didn't know that at the start, but it's got a lot of literature and it's got a lot of guidance all the way through it. And that is one of the things that you don't really find with a lot of circuits that are just out there published on paper. There are certain websites out there, don't get me wrong. Uh, ESP, uh, Elliott Sound Products is one of them. Talking Electronics is one of them. They're the ones I mainly use uh, when I'm looking for things that I need an explanation of how the circuit works. Of course, I watch some YouTube video, uh, channels as well, John Audio Tech and um, Blue Glow um, Electronics, because they give great explanations. And I'm sure there's lots more out there as well, but you know, you've know, you only got a certain amount of time in the day for, to be doing this sort of stuff. So I limit myself. Um, so yeah, so there's a whole bunch of information on the power up, which I really do like, and then we have our power supply. So it even shows you your power supply there, and um, your, capaci your capacity is very basic, very easy, it's non-regulated, you don't want to try regulating this thing. Um, I would suggest myself personally, even though he says here that you can go for the 300 uh, VA transformer, I would suggest two different transformers at 160 VA each. And the reason for that is because you might have the right channel doing a bit more work on some bass or something on the left channel, and you don't want that. You don't want them competing on the same transformer. This is only my preference, the same transformer for current. So if you've got one each independent of each other, it's more like monoblocks then. Um, that's my preference. But that's what I would do. That's what I'm going to do again. Uh, so yeah, so you've even got down to the information on here now. I've got 15 millifarad on mine. And this time around when I build it, I'm going to actually split that between more capacitors rather than have three capacitors giving me uh, two capacitors per side that would mean that you've got four capacitors. I've got one 10 millifarad and one 4.7, so around about 15 millifarad per side, per, because you've got a swing of negative 35 volts, uh, positive 35 volts. Was that 36? Negative 36, positive 36. And so you're gonna have a negative 15 millifarad and a positive 15 millifarad. And I've broken mine down into two capacitors for that. But rather than we do that this time around, I'm actually going to build that across five different capacitors aside. Because when you parallel your capacitors, you get a lower um, equivalent series resistance. Which is great. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? So yeah, there we are. This is the circuit we're going to be going for over the next couple of videos, probably three videos. We're going to have a couple for the build, talking about the circuit a little bit more because there's some stuff I can explain in there. And I want to be able to read off some of this to you guys as well, and it all takes time. And of course, there's going to be the building part of it as well. And then afterwards, we're going to be testing it and see how well it works. And I've still got to wait for transformers to come in and the uh, extra capacitors because, like I say, I'm going to be using five um, 3,300 millifarads per side. So that's 10 capacitors per board. So I need some slightly bigger boards and waiting for those capacitors to come in. They've been ordered. Uh, the transformers haven't, but their next day delivery, that's not a big problem. It's just uh, the cash for that. So yes, I'm very excited. Here is the bill of materials. If you want it to, you can screenshot that. If you were going to play along at home, uh, this is where you get to see 
all of the resistors that you need. All right, and we've even got the wattage for the ones you're going to need there. The rest of them can be halves. All of the capacitors that you're going to need. Yeah, that can just be classed as uh, C8, C9, C10, C11. Don't worry about that. And then you've got your, uh, your D1, which is the LED diode you need, the green LED, 5mm, regular brightness, you don't want it extra bright on this. And you've got uh, fuses, you need fuses per side. This is per side as well, this isn't for two channels, it's just one channel. And then you've got your, your transistors down this way. I've put in um, the transistors that I've got, but you can look at the other ones on there and go for the cheaper ones. Like I say, I've been using the cheaper ones and they've been fine, they've been great. Why do they upgrade to the next ones? Well, I don't know, why not? I had 50 quid burning a hole in my pocket and I really wanted to build another couple of these channels because I think they're great. I would suggest as well getting from the decent supplier as well, your BC546s if you're gonna get them or you might find them on uh, eBay and if you find the ones that are marked up nicely like these ones you can see they've got a grey covering on them these do work really well the decent the decent ones um, but yeah that's it and I'd say uh, have at it because it's a really good amplifier and I can guarantee you you know unless you miss the audio file and want to try and pick holes in it you, you, you're hardly going to find a better one out there to build and there might be some, but they might be a bit more complex with, you know, making inductors and stuff in there, which are all very good. Um, but it could be a bit more complexity to it like that. This is simple, and that's all I like, because, you know, I'm not such a great bright spark. So I like simple, I like easy to lay out, something I can lay out on a board if I want to, nice and easy, and I can do it as I see it. Or with another great preference is if you wanted to you could just go directly to ESP Elliot Sound Products and buy the boards directly from him I believe they're about £25 what that equivalates to in Australian dollars or American dollars um, I'm not quite sure but it's your choice I'm going to be doing it on here if you got this far thanks very much for watching and I can't wait to see you again in the next one these videos are going to come a little bit rapid um hopefully get it all done within a well, less than two weeks uh, but so they're going to come a little bit rapid as there might be other little bits of details i want to stick in in between times that i think i may have forgotten catch you in the next one guys take care everybody